With the Formula One grid finally returning to racing under the lights in the season opening race in Bahrain, series fans undoubtedly hoped that the team had overcome their biggest issues that beset them last season. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. In fact, their gap to Red Bull has remained largely unchanged as both Mercedes drivers and team management revealed that a major change in direction with the car concept will be needed they want to compete for wins once more. But what exactly are the issues that stop Mercedes training his tracks? What did team principal Toto Wolff reveal about changing the car's design philosophy? Stick around to the end of the video to find out why Red Bull's domination is a bleak sign of things to come. Right, so let's get started. George Russell and Lewis Hamilton both knew as they lined up 6th and 7th on the grid that what lay ahead of them would be a struggle. That is exactly how it turned out. The pair of Mercedes drivers ended the race behind both Red Bulls, Fernando Alonso, Austin Martin and Carlos Sainz Ferrari. Max Verstappen had taken a commanding lead early on and was cruising for most of the race, finished the race a whopping 50 seconds ahead of Hamilton. Well, one of the worst days in racing, really not good at all, Wolf too told Sky Sports. We were just lacking pace, front, right and centre. That's a reflection of the test because Austin Martin is very fast. They deserve that. Red Bull is just on a different planet. Mercedes was expecting Red Bull to be the head of the field, but the gap between the W14 and the RB19 had come as a bitter blow to Wolf. They said it reminded him of Mercedes' period of prowess over the past 10 years. Meanwhile, Hamilton's frustration was evident after a race in which he said he was miles away from a podium on pure performance and he was lucky to benefit from Charles Leclerc's retirement or he'd finish sixth. When asked if he was concerned about the lack of a performance increase between 2022 and 2023, Hamilton responded, Concerned wouldn't be the word. I don't really want to say too much. We've got to keep working. We know we're not where we need to be and we know this isn't the right car. It's a difficult one. I've just got to try and stay positive and keep pushing the guys. Keep trying to be a positive light for them and get the best points I can. Indeed, whereas the German manufacturer won the Brazilian Grand Prix late in the season last year after brushing itself off and digging deep with the W13, their current struggles has elicited a completely different reaction. Rather than pointing to a good baseline for Mercedes, it's moved forward from an annual F1 development war that has instead thrown up the white flag. Within minutes of the end of the qualifying, before Russell and Hamilton had met with the engineers, all the team could demonstrate is long run speed on Sunday, Toto Wolff had already declared that title hopes were all but over and that a new car concept was needed. I don't think this package is going to be competitive eventually, he said. We gave our best shot all over the winter and now we just need to all regroup and sit down with the engineers who are totally not dogmatic about anything. There are no holy cows and we need to decide what is the development direction that we want to pursue in order to become competitive and win races. Since different circuits can significantly alter the competitive order as strengths and weaknesses are revealed, F1 teams typically prefer to wait until after a few races to assess how their cars compare to the competition. Wolf effectively calling the W14 game over after so little running may therefore seem rather odd. So what are the reasons behind this damning stance? Well, most important of these is that Mercedes is aware that the situation is entirely different from the one from the previous year, where there was a discrepancy between the W13's potential and what it was seeing on the track. It knew that somewhere deep within the quirks of its 2022 car was an awful lot of downforce that just needed to be able to extract somehow without it triggering porpoising. The team is in a completely different place this year. The W14 is performing exactly as the team anticipated. It's not a case of there being a lot of lap time that it knows can be unlocked further down the road. The team has acknowledged that a sizable upgrade is under development, could be finished by the time of the Amelia Romagna Grand Prix in mid-May. That update might only add a few tenths. That is not the game-changing performance Mercedes needs to compete with the might of Red Bull, Ferrari, and now Aston Martin, who will likely also be making more improvements to the cars over the coming weeks. Mercedes has not delivered a car that is performing worse than expected. As Wolf admitted, simply put, just falls way short of the competition. We hit our targets, Wolf continued, and that's why we gave it our best shot. The moment comes when the stopwatch comes out and it shows us that it's not, simply not good enough. We haven't got enough downforce 
and we need to wait to find solutions to fix that. The fact that Mercedes customer team Aston Martin has surpassed it in the standings has further highlighted the team's problems. But while the progress that Aston Martin has made in delivering arguably the third fastest car is a blow, its rival's pace will at least provide a wealth of answers for Brackley about where its gains need to come. Given that Aston Martin shares the same engine, transmission and rear suspension as Mercedes, there are some obvious indications of where the W14 package falls short. But regardless of the results of the post-race investigation, Wolf is adamant that the team needs to change lanes with the car. So, what exactly would it take to bring Mercedes back to competitiveness? Well, in Bahrain, he discussed the necessity of taking untrodden paths in the search of the kind of performance step it needs to get back to the front. That appears to almost certainly involve tearing up the concept of the current Mercedes, goes beyond just its zero pod design and includes its floor and diffuser. There is little doubt that Mercedes will also have to swallow its pride and take a critical look at Red Bull's downwash solution, given that the majority of the grid has changed tack to pursue that strategy. The biggest decision Mercedes will have to make is whether to completely stop working on the current car, begin on its new concept, or to work on both concepts simultaneously. Such a decision is especially tricky in the cost cap era, as the team is unlikely to be able to afford the kind of response that could unleash a completely revamped B-Spec this season. It follows then that it may have to continue using the W14 for some time. Any new car concept is most likely going to be something arriving for 2024. The question is how soon does Mercedes switch off work on the current car? According to sources, the team is open to the possibility of abandoning the Amola upgrade work and starting work on a new concept right away. There could be some short-term anguish, but overall the benefits are clear. We'll suggest it may be too early to commit to such a path yet, but he is aware that time is ticking. Definitely every day counts, and you are losing these days, he said. It's going to be difficult to catch up, therefore we need to take the right, precise decisions now in order to set the sails in the right direction. With Red Bull so far ahead and teams like Mercedes not holding a handle to them, 2023 could be a much more dull affair than expected. If things continue, it won't be long before the excitement of a new season and the novelty of an Aston Martin rise wears off, leaving F1 with a problem it has encountered before, a dominant team vanishing into the distance and leaving everyone else fighting for scraps. It happened with Mercedes during the turbo hybrid era, and it appears that it's Christian Horner's turn to rack up the trophies. The difference between those earlier dominance eras and the present is that F1 is currently experiencing its biggest ever popularity boom, and the possibility of long-term Red Bull dominance is making some F1 insiders very uneasy. The real question is whether Mercedes, or any other team for that matter, will ever be able to seriously challenge the Red Bulls. What do you think? Will Mercedes be able to turn things around with a new car concept anytime soon? Or will Red Bull be given carte blanche for championship victory? If you enjoyed this video, you're gonna wanna click the video on your screen now. You will not regret it. Thanks a lot for watching.